Alexander Anacano is live in Sonoma County where residents and businesses are bracing themselves for a new stay at home order to take effect. Andrea. Yeah, Liz, many of the businesses I spoke with in Petaluma tonight say they were expecting this. Starting on Saturday, there will be no more outdoor dining and people will have to stay home for anything but essential activities. Initially, like like anything else, you're just like, oh, geez, not again. Peter White, the owner of Sugo Trattoria, is not surprised by the latest round of closures announced by the county today. We need to act now before things get worse for us in Sonoma County. While as a region, ICU bed capacity sits around 18%, it has fallen under 12% in Sonoma County, and it stems from a sharp increase in COVID cases. Sonoma County is now seeing 25 new cases per 100,000 per day. The 14-day case rate is 343 per 100,000, the highest number Sonoma County has seen so far in this pandemic. And those numbers may not reflect the actual spread in the community as the county now has a shortage of contact tracers. Because the longer it takes us to reach our cases to isolate and our contacts identified and quarantined, the more likely we'll have more spread in our in our communities. Sonoma County has been stuck in the purple tier since the governor released the color coded system in late August. Despite having widespread COVID cases, Public Health Officer Sundari Mace says it wanted to wait before joining other Bay Area counties in imposing the stay at home order. And we thought that was important for our business community and we weren't seeing the um, very alarming trends really until this last week and a half. Here at Zugo Trattoria, owner Peter White says his business will survive, but his biggest concern is to provide enough hours for his employees until they can open for outdoor and indoor dining again. After what, what is it, eight months now, yeah, you, you, your emotions are up and down, and so now you just got to roll with it. You've really just got to roll with it. Sonoma County will get 4,875 doses of the Pfizer vaccine next week, and then doses of the Moderna vaccine later this month. The stay-at-home order will last at least until January 9th. Live in Petaluma, Andrea Nakano, KPIX 5.
our community members. Another day of above average temperatures across the Bay Area today, but big changes on the way. A storm system in the Pacific is going to send clouds, cooler weather towards us tomorrow, and then a good chance of rain. I'll track that coming up in the forecast. To reduce the risk of wildfires, PG&E may proactively turn off power when severe weather is forecast. Here are four ways to prepare before a power shutoff. Update your contact information at pge.com slash mywildfirealerts so we can reach you. Plan for medical needs like medications that need to be refrigerated or devices that require power. Pack or restock your emergency supply kit. Ensure backup power sources are safe to operate. To learn more, visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com. Paul Hagen, Mary Lee, and Darren Peck. Three meteorologists with one shared philosophy that you deserve more than just highs and lows. Let's talk about the big picture perspective. Again, watching relative humidity. And let me show you part of the reason why. With more detail, more context, and more science. Explaining not just what's happening, but why. Expect smart weather from KPIX5. Expect more. Taking shorter showers. Watering our lawns between dusk and dawn. That's, That's how, how I can serve my California. California. Take advantage of CalWater rebates and programs at calwater.com slash conservation. I wanted to die. I wanted the pain to end. To my fellow veterans with PTSD, we can help. Strive r, r is a two-week treatment program designed to help veterans live the lives that they want to live. The Strive r, &R program and Dr. Brian helped me stay alive. Over 75% of veterans who complete the program report significant improvements in their quality of life. It worked. It was effective. It was fast. It feels amazing to feel happy. I'm a medium and a psychic. Are you open to getting a reading? Yeah. Sure. Mm -mm, we ain't doing it. There's actually somebody coming through right now. Dolly. <gasps> New at 11, the ninth federal inmate put to death by the Trump administration this year used his last words to apologize to the families of his victims. 40-year-old Brandon Bernard was an accomplice in the Texas murders of two youth ministers. He was 18 at the time. His co-defendant, who actually carried out the actual killings, was executed in September. Four more federal inmates, three men and a woman, are set to die before Inauguration Day starting tomorrow. An effort to recall Governor Gavin Newsom hit a major milestone tonight. The campaign has collected the 800,000 signatures that it needs to cross the state's 10 percent threshold. Well, that means that county registrar's offices are required to begin hand verifying those petitions. One and a half million verified signatures are required to trigger a special recall election. New at 11, who would you choose for Person of the Year? Time Magazine made its pick, and this year, it's actually two people, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. They beat out other contenders like President Trump and Dr. Anthony Fauci. Harris, a Bay Area native, will become the first woman and first black and South Asian person to serve as vice president. In January, when Biden is sworn in, he'll become the oldest U.S. president in history. Take a live look out at Union Square in San Francisco tonight. Yeah, it's Macy's all lit up with its uh, storefront holiday windows. The Bill Graham menorah lit up to mark the first night of Hanukkah. In any other year, people would be gathering in person to watch the lighting. There'd be people all over Union Square shopping, but this year to keep the crowds away and the traditional live Shabbat San Francisco is streaming it on Facebook every night. And the kids are going to love this. Tonight, a holiday tradition has been revived. Yeah, KPI X5 Joe Vasquez shows us the new competition among San Francisco fire stations. This is Station 35 here along the Embarcadero, all lit up for Christmas. And in fact, they will be competing with other firehouses in the city in a new competition, a revival of a tradition that began and ended seven decades ago. The year was 1948. San Francisco firehouses began a fierce competition to be named the best decorated fire station. The grand prize, $1,000, 
They went all out, often covering the entire station with ornaments. The competition lasted three Christmases before a labor dispute ended it. Fast forward to 2020, the fire department has decided to bring the tradition back with a little help from a sponsor. The San Francisco Fire Credit Union, I could not finish my sentence on my idea before they were, were in. What can we do? Now the grand prize is $3,000. The best decorated firehouse will donate their winnings to the charity of their choice. The public is invited to check out the decorations from a safe social distance. This is already accomplished, putting smiles on everybody's faces from firefighters to our community members who have already called, text, emailed me with this is great. I can't wait to walk my kids by the fire station. We are so excited that they are doing it again because it brought so much joy to the children, to the adults. Robert and Marilyn Katzman are retired tour guides. They say they were given these photos by the family of Alfred Stetler, a city employee who, like many San Franciscans, never forgot the holiday decorations and the smiles they brought to the city. Especially at this time, with everybody having to uh, be in quarantine, to be able to drive by and see the firehouses, it's going to give everybody such a good feeling. Joe Vasquez, KPIX 5. Can't wait to see all of them. All the stations are competing, and the winner will be announced December 22nd. And speaking of dazzling displays, if you still don't know the way to San Jose, just look <laughs> for the lights. This is the scene on Emory Street tonight. It's all set to music, piped out to passing cars there through the radio. You don't even have to get out of your car. It took the homeowners three weeks to set it all up. Visitors can drop off a donation for the Second Harvest Food Bank or drop a letter in the magic mailbox. Kids can write letters to Santa and then I will mail them to Santa and Santa will write them back and send them a letter in the mail. I had a, a four-year-old yesterday. She was Oba Nihai and she came up and she said, this makes me happy and we all need happiness right now. We certainly do, and I love those displays. It's so neat to see how creative people can be. They're really